Hi everyone! I'm back with what I hope will be a short little tutorial to walk through some of the common questions I've seen pop up, pop up in our group as well as from some folks that have messaged me either directly on Facebook or on Etsy. Um, I will link below the video that I filmed where I walked through how to import the planners and the sticker kits into GoodNotes. Um, this video today I'm planning to walk through uh, how you can choose between the different covers that come with my planners, how you can delete and duplicate pages, um, as well as kind of a sprinkle in of some tips and tricks as we go along as well. So let's go ahead and jump in with choosing the cover for the planner. Um, so in GoodNotes, at the top here, you can see what I've done is I've already imported the August themed planner. Um, this is directly um, without any modifications or anything thus far. So um, one of the cool things with GoodNotes is there is this little four box up here. Um, and when you tap on that, it gives you a really good overview of all of the pages in the planner. Um, it's nice as far as there's a high level um, look at what order they're in and kind of where they sit within the planner. Um, so for me, every planner that I put together, I always include three different cover options. Whatever is in this first space in these thumbnails is going to be what you see when you are um, outside the planner in the, in the files section of GoodNotes. So um, from here, you have kind of two options. You can either just, um, oops, you can drag and drop. So if I press down and hold, I can move the different covers to the front place. Um, alternatively, if you don't want to kind of click and drag them, you can also click this down arrow and actually move to trash and get rid of whatever one it is that you don't like. Um, I find that I normally just click and drag them based on which cover I like um, for that month's theme. So that's a really quick and easy way of choosing which cover is going to show up on the front of your planner. Um, no matter which of these covers uh, is on the front, uh, when you tap the, I'll show you here, when you tap this uh, label on the front, um, it's going to automatically take you to the monthly overview page. Um, and when you press the power button, it'll take you to the front page. So, it'll, well, it'll, it'll take you to the original front page, I should, I should specify. Um, so if I were to exit out of this planner and hop on over, whatever is on that front page will be the cover that you see in your files, okay? So I'll go ahead and hop back into my planner. Um, so that's how you choose the cover that you want to display. Um, the next thing that I always do when I start the month um, is going back into kind of this organizer. Um, I personally, I don't ever use the schedule pages. So every planner um, that I create for each day, um, there are basically when there's five pages. So on the first, uh, you've got the daily schedule, followed by the 24-hour plan, followed by the assessment, the journal page, and then the discovery worksheet. And then you move on to the second and, and so forth. Um, so as I was saying, I don't ever use these daily schedules. I include them because other people like them and like to use them. Um, but I don't use them and I like to be able to quickly flip through my pages. So I actually, at the beginning of every month, I go in and I delete them all. Um, and that is something, for the most part, you can delete most any of the pages. So the quickest way to go about doing this is I find the first page in my planner, I hit this select button up top, and that's gonna allow me to choose multiple schedules. So you'll see, I'm gonna go through 
and I am going to select every single one of those schedule pages. Uh, it's going to take me a hot minute here. And then I'm going to just hit delete and it's going to get rid of every single one of them. And a lot of people are worried by deleting a page that you're going to uh, mess up links and things within the planner. Generally, that's not a problem, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. So this is the last daily schedule page, and I've got these options here at the top. I'm going to go ahead and hit trash, and now all at one time, that deleted all of them in my planner. So I'm going to hit done and close. And now you can see if I swipe backwards, this takes me back to the discovery worksheet on the first, and I no longer have a schedule page in between that and the next day. So all of those pages are gone. Um, the only links that you're going to break per se is right here, you know, on the side here where you've got these tabs in your dailies, schedule, plan, assess, journal, and discover. Um, whatever day, so I'm on the second, so it's the second day of the month, um, I click on those and they're going to be those pages for the second day of the month. If I move to the fourth, then it's going to be those pages for the fourth. So if I hit schedule, you can see the link lights up. I don't know. Hopefully you, that's picking up on camera. The link kind of lights up there, um, but it's not going anywhere because I deleted those pages. So um, it, it's not really broken per se because there's no page to go to. But all these other ones, um, they still will hop around and work just fine. It's just the schedule one that is gone because I deleted those pages. Um, so anytime you're just deleting a, a page, you're not really going to break any links per se. Um, the only thing that won't work is if you clicked a link that was supposed to go to that page. So that's kind of how that works. Um, the next thing that I was going to touch on and kind of walk through is related to um, duplicating pages. Uh, a lot of the times, you know, when I create these planners, um, I will only create so many um, notes pages and things like that. So say for instance, um, we'll go down here, it's kind of the notes sections. So with the August planner, I added the four ends journal page. Um, so I think I added 10. Um, you could quickly see by tapping into your organizer um, and kind of scrolling, <laughs> I know that I added these at the very end. Um, so yeah, I added about 10 of those pages. Say you ran out um, and needed some more of them because you filled them all up. Um, that's really easy to do. You you know could potentially do the same thing with any of um, the line pages. You know you run out of pages and you can add them pretty much anywhere within the planner. So there are a couple ways that you could go about doing that. Um, with the if you're on the page and I'll swipe over a handful here. So here I am. I've gotten to the very end, and I know that's the last actual page in my planner. So there are two ways that I can actually um, add more of these specific pages. So I can go to my organizer and scroll down to the bottom. You always know what page you're on. Um, I don't think I can make that bigger. Yeah. Uh, because there's a blue square around that in the organizer. So that's how you know that that's the page that you're actually on in the planner. So um, behind any of these pages, there's this little downward carrot. Um, if you click on that carrot, duplicate um, is an option. So I can go ahead and hit duplicate. And now you can see my blue box is still here and I've duplicated that same page and put it right behind it. Okay. Um, you can also do it directly from within the planner. So say maybe uh, I'm in the third note taking section and I want to add some more pages here or I run out. Um, the other way that you can do it is using this plus paper button up here at the top. So if I hit that button, it's going to give me a few options. Um, I am going to add a page and you can do it before, or you can do it after, or you can do it after the last page of your planner. 
Um, the current template is actually going to show you the page that you're currently on. So because I'm on this notes page, it's offering me that as an option. You can also add blank pages. Um, if you choose any of these other options within GoodNotes, they are not going to be the same as your planner, okay? So I could add a blank page, but that blank page, I'll go ahead and add it for you. Um, so I can see the page I added is behind this one, so I swipe, and I truly, I do have a blank page, but it's also a blank page that doesn't have any of the tabs or anything. You're, again, you're not gonna break anything. You kind of added it in a legitimate way, but um, it also doesn't have all the tabs and things that you might want. So um, I can go ahead and come here on these three dots, and I'm just going to move this page to the trash. So move that and what that's done is it's just removed that page so <clears throat> the other way you could go about adding maybe just a regular blank page or a regular line page so say we go with the blank page option um, one of the things I've done is I've actually linked a page in the planner that would take you straight to a blank page as an option so um, let's see let's go ahead and do that if you go to the index which that's up here, the very first tab. I'm gonna to go to my index. And within the index, um, there's actually a, a handful of kind of linked pages within this index page. So I've got the helpful links, which will take you straight to setting my 60 day goal, ideal day, ideal schedule, good, better, best, and feeling of feeling. Not all of these pages are linked up here at the top. Um, only, you know, good, better, best, and feeling of feeling. Actually, feeling of feeling isn't even linked up there. So some of you may not even realize that I've got this page built into the planner. So if I tap on feeling a feeling, remember, this is probably the most common question I get, is this little pencil with the circle around it, that's your way of toggling back and forth between editing your planner and when you're editing, you have your toolbar with all your options. Um, and I click it again, and now I'm basically in what I refer to as navigation mode. Um, and navigation means I can click on any links and it'll hop to those linked pages. So I can click feel a feeling and it hops over to the feel a feeling page. Um, hopping back to the index, I could go straight to um, my ideal schedule. It'll hop to that page. So um, there are some additional links within this index. Um, also, these sections, section one, two, and three, um, these are these sections down below. Um, and if you tap on the section name, it'll hop to that section as well. So lots of different links. Um, I don't think I've ever really walked through all of the different ways that things are linked within the planner. Um, I just kind of tend to sprinkle those in here and there. But anyway, what I was getting at, um, in regards to the blank page. So on this index, there is this blank and this lined. So if I tip blank, I tap, not tip. Now I have a true blank page that still has all of the links. It's a blank page that I built into the planner. So um, from here, I can go ahead and tap on these three dots up top and it gives me copy page as an option. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually copy this blank page and then you could navigate back to wherever you want to in the planner, wherever it is that you wanted to add that page. So maybe you wanted to add like an extra journaling page or something on a particular day. Um, say I wanna add a journaling page at the end of the sixth. Um, you know, I can swipe through here, figure out exactly where I wanna add it. What I always do is I choose to, I sit on the page before where I want to add what I'm adding. So I wanna add a blank page after this journal page. Now, if you remember, I, I hit the copy, so it's stored it in the, in the clipboard. I'm gonna hit add page, again, up here at the top. And I could either basically duplicate this template and just hit that, and it's gonna add it after. Um, or I can paste page, and that's gonna paste whatever I copied from the clipboard after this page. So I'm gonna hit paste page, and now I was here and it's added my blank page right behind my journal page where I wanted it to be added. So that's 
a quick and easy way to add pages anywhere within the planner. Um, let's see, what was the, what else was I gonna look to do? So we've talked about how to duplicate your pages using your organizer. Um, so you can also see here, here's that blank page I added. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually, where'd that blue, there it is. I'm going to just move that page to the trash so I don't really want it there. Um, and hit close, and there we go. So we've talked about how to duplicate pages, how to add pages. Um, like I said, there's also a lined page. It doesn't have notes at the top, it's just a plain lined page. You can add as many of those as you want anywhere within your planner. Again, you're just gonna go here, you're gonna copy your page, then you go back to wherever you wanna add it, hit your add, and paste page, and it'll put that page that you copied and insert it anywhere within the planner. Um, the only other thing that I was thinking I was gonna cover today was also um, in relation to uh, these labeled sections. I do get questions on these sometimes as well. These are really just note sections. You can use them for whatever you want. You could use them for non-weight loss related stuff or you could use them for different types of calls. What I use them for um, every month is I will go in and I will actually, I'll use one section for just general call notes. So I'm gonna add a label up here and I'm gonna label this one call notes. I'm gonna take this, oops. My planner's jumping around on me. Here I go. So I'm gonna use my lasso tool. I'm gonna to move that little label over here. When you've got this lasso still highlighted, if I tap on it, it does also allow me to resize without actually doing the number. So I can just make that a little bit bigger. And then I can also add that same label. So again, lasso, tap on it. I'm gonna copy this and let me toggle off so I can go into navigation and hop over to section one. And I'm having problems with my good notes right now. Oh, there it goes. There we go. And paste. And again, now I've labeled that section. And I will do that with all of my sections um, every month. So um, I can quickly remember what section is what if I navigate to my index. Um, so generally what I do, I'll have one for call notes. Um, my second section is usually used for whatever the theme is for the month. Um, so for this last month, the maintenance course was the theme. So I would have any maintenance calls and things like that. Or as I work through um, the content on our webpage, um, I put those notes in that section. And then the third section is if I'm doing any of the other bonus courses or self-study courses, um, maybe I want to kind of carve those out. Um, so if I hop over to my July planner, um, let's see. So July, I had the drop it's like it's hot and um, everything that I used for that in that section. Then I had my general call notes and um, myself and my accountability group, um, some of us were going through the Basics 2.0 course again. So there's all of my call notes from that. And that keeps them nice and organized for me and it makes it really easy to come back and, and look and find what I'm looking for. Um, I will address one totally unrelated question to kind of the topics that I was covering, but um, the last thing that did come up uh, for me a couple times, and I think in our group, um, this month was related to uh, the sticker kit that I create. Um, this is a sticker kit that I, I create one to match the planner every month um, and I put it in my Etsy shop. So um, the sticker kits, they are all like a little linked um, notebook and it looks narrow because it's designed to be used in kind of the sidebar um, on an iPad. So. Uh, when I want to use these stickers with my planner, uh, I open up the sticker book, I have my planner open, and this here um, it might be hard to see, but there's this little notebook right here. I'm going to tap on this notebook and open in a new window, and now I have two 
basically two, two pages, kind of like you would on a PC. So I'll just slide, you can see you got this little line right here, I'll slide this over. And um, now I can go ahead and use those stickers in my planner. So I'm actually getting ready to, uh, sorry, that's my dogs, um, getting ready to set up my month. And um, I will go ahead and you can either um, lasso, you know, lasso what you want to bring in to the planner. So I can copy those dots. Hopefully this doesn't crash my good notes. And drop those in. And then basically I go in and oops, I'll size them all when they're all highlighted to get them the size that I want. This was also in my last video. And, um, and then I'll label all my days. Um, the other way that you can do it is if you actually tap on the photo icon, um, you can tap on any, you know, any stickers in the sticker book so that it highlights it. And then you kind of press and hold a little bit and you see it kind of pulse almost and you just drag it over. But you can see what, it, that's if you were going to do one thing at a time. Um, I don't actually use that nearly as often as I lasso and copy and paste things over. I just, that's easier for me workflow wise. Um, but those are kind of the two ways to bring those stickers into your planner. So uh, that's really everything that I was going to go over today. I'm trying really hard to keep this video somewhat short so that folks that really want to get through this content quickly, they can do so. Um, and I will maybe try and film another video of actually setting up my month and how I go about setting up all of the calls in my calendar and kind of decorating. Um, I had a couple people talk about wanting to see like a setup video like that. So um, I'll see if I can film that. It, it would be much more lengthy. So for now, this is everything that I was going to show you guys today. So hopefully some of you find this helpful. Um, and... Uh, that's that's about everything. Thanks ladies. You guys are always so generous and kind with um, with all of your feedback and uh, I, I love to hear it. So anyway, have a awesome day and happy planning. Bye guys. <laughs>